I'd like to do an example of calculating the electric force between two point charges, QA and QB, using Coulomb's law. This is a relatively small and straightforward problem in the grand scheme of things, but the techniques that we practice here are going to be used over and over throughout our studies of electricity and magnetism, so it's worth getting them down early on. Now, in this drawing, I've shown where these charges are. QA is up here at y equals 2 centimeters and x equals 0, and QB is at uh, x equals minus 3 centimeters, y equals minus 2 centimeters. So I've got those positions defined. QA, I'm going to say, is negative 2 nanocoulombs of charge. Remember, a nanocoulomb is 10 to the minus 9th coulombs. That's a pretty small amount of charge. QB is plus 1 nanocoulombs of charge. And I want to know what is the force by A on B. Now I can start this question very qualitatively. I know that QA and QB have opposite signs, and so we know from our experience that those will attract one another. So I expect the force on QB to look something like this. It's pointing, it's going to attract QB toward QA. I expect that force to be something like that. That's, that's the force I'm expecting. To make that more precise, I'm going to turn to Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law, relatively familiar, it's the force by A on B is equal to K, Coulomb's constant, which we'll approximate as 9 times 10 to the 10th Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared, times QA times QB, the two charges, divided by R squared, the distance between the two squared, times R hat from A to B. That's the unit vector that points from A toward B. On their own, these components, it's a relatively, it's a relatively simple looking equation, but the pieces are a little bit complicated. In particular, the R hat uh, takes some getting used to. A lot of people, it takes some practice before they get that down. So let me review exactly how, in a very algorithmic way, you can go and from a picture like this to figuring out the distance R A to B and the unit vector R hat from A to B. Now, if you can take shortcuts and just squint at a picture and see these, that's even better. But what I, show, what I want to show you is that if you can't just see it in some example, then there's a straightforward algorithm you can use to calculate the whole thing. In particular, I'm going to do that for this problem. My first step is always going to be to figure out what is the vector, r vector, from a to b. And this is just a displacement vector. It's final minus initial. Final point minus initial point. Target point minus source point. So it's going to be the position of b in your coordinate system minus the position vector of A in your coordinate system. What does that mean for us? Well, I can say that RA in my coordinate system is, there's no X component, so it's entirely 2 centimeters times the Y hat unit vector, the coordinate unit vector. RB in this problem, well, there is an X component. It's minus 3 centimeters X hat minus 2 centimeters y hat. That's my position vector in this coordinate system of charge B. So if I want to know r from A to B, the total vector distance between, or displacement between A and B, that is rB minus ra, so it's minus 3 centimeters x hat, that's an x, minus 2 centimeters y hat, minus 2 centimeters y hat. Just take the difference of the two vectors. And in the end, what I come up with is minus 3 centimeters x hat minus 4 centimeters y hat. That's my displacement vector from A to B. It's the vector showing how I go from one to the other. And you'll notice both are negative. That makes sense. The direction from A to B is down and to the left. And so down and to the left is in fact minus and minus, and negative in both coordinates. So that's a good r vector from A to B. So next, I'm going to calculate that magnitude that I need. Well, let's go over here and do it. Uh, r A to B is the square root of, this is just the Pythagorean theorem, it's the square root of the x component is negative 3 centimeters squared plus y, compu y component is minus 4 centimeters squared. That's one that I can do in my head. 3 squared plus 4 squared 
is 5 squared. So this is going to be 5 centimeters. That's my r vector. You know, my, my r scale, rather, my, my magnitude of r, the magnitude of my r vector. So great, we've got that. Finally, r hat from a to b is just dividing those two by one another. Remember what that does. I take this, minus 3 centimeters x hat, minus 4 centimeters y hat, I divide by 5 centimeters. The beauty of this is that, as with any unit vector, the units cancel out. Okay, bad name. Unit vector, remember, comes from unit, meaning unity, 1. It has magnitude 1, and it has no dimensions, no units. So if I can't, that you can see the units cancel out in that equation. Um, and then this is just, if I, once I cancel that out, I'll summarize. This is equal to minus 3 fifths x hat minus 4 fifths y hat. That's my unit vector. And again, if I drew that up here, minus 3 fifths minus 4 fifths, uh, I would be drawing something minus 3 minus 4 something that looks kind of like that. There's my r hat vector in my picture. It points straight from a toward b. That's what a unit vector is supposed to be. So remember what this does. In Coulomb's law, the r hat is mostly the direction. The rest of it is mostly the magnitude. We'll have one little exception to that where the plus and minus signs come in, but that's basically the story. So now I can put this all together and actually calculate my net force. I can plug into Coulomb's law that this is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared times, let's see, QA is minus 2, minus 2 times 10 to the minus 9th Coulombs times plus 1 times 10 to the minus 9th Coulombs divided by my distance, remember, I just plug that result, here we are, um, that distance result in here, squared, divided by 25 centimeters squared. Don't forget to square the units when you square the quantity. Uh, times, all this has to be times my unit vector. Minus 3 fifths x hat minus 4 fifths y hat. All right, so I've got that. And now, my whole job is just to simplify this, simplify and plug it in. Um, I have to do a few unit conversions along the way. I see that I have a centimeter squared in the denominator over there. I probably want to do something with that. Uh, in particular, I know that one meter is 100 centimeters. So if I multiply this denominator times one meter over 100 centimeters, sorry for squeezing this in, squared, that will be what I need to convert this to meters in the end, and you can check that, right? You can always check to say centimeters squared cancels out with the centimeter squared in there. Continue with units since I'm in the middle of that. The meters squared down here will cancel with the meters squared over there, and coulombs squared down here will, multi will cancel out with coulombs times coulombs. I wind up with an answer that's going to be in newtons, which is great news. And then putting it all together, what do I have? I, I've got, I guess, uh, I've, now I just have a bunch of math to do. I have here I have here a 10 to the 9th that cancels out with a 10 to the minus 9th. And this piece over here is a 10 to the minus 4th in the denominator. So that'll combine with the 10 to the minus 9th in the numerator to give me a 10 to the minus 5th, I guess. Uh, so what do I have? Uh, 9 times minus 2 times plus 1 gives me, let me keep calculating here, that gives me minus 18 times 10, I combine these to give me 10 to the minus 5th newtons in the numerator, divided by 25 in the denominator, because all the other stuff canceled out in there, minus 18 times 10 to the minus 5th divided by 25, and then all this times minus three-fifths x hat minus four-fifths y hat. Well, hey, notice the minus sign out front. I like to think of that as something going that's part of the direction. 
So I'm just going to distribute that minus sign into the unit vector over there. Basically multiply this and that quantity by minus 1, each one by minus 1. Now let's look at this. I have a magnitude piece and a direction piece. The magnitude is positive, as magnitudes have to be. The direction is a unit vector, as directions have to be. And that unit vector, plus 3 fifths, plus 4 fifths, looks for all the world like this vector that I drew here. It's exactly the right direction to be going from QB toward QA. We've got our attractive force. Over here, we've got the math. We, we've, we just have to do some math. Um, if I were really clever, I'd try to do this in my head, but that would be embarrassing for all of us. So instead, I'll just do it. For my x component, I've got 18 divided by 25 times 3 divided by 5, and I get 0 0.432 times 10 to the minus fifth x hat. And then for my y component, again, 18 divided by 25 times 4 fifths, 4 divided by 5, gives me plus 0 0.576 times 10 to the minus fifth, can't forget that, y hat. Or if I want to, those are, those are quite the right magnitudes for what I want, so I'm just going to say that this equals, or if I want to write it as 10 to the minus sixth, oh, my goodness, I left out my newtons. Of course, this is Newtons. Don't forget your units, kids. Uh, so, got to be Newtons. So, this is going to be, if I move this decimal point over, that's going to be times 10 to the minus 6th in each one. And I know 10 to the minus 6th is the micro SI prefix. So, I can write this as 4.32x hat plus 5.76y hat micro Newtons. And that's my answer. I've calculated that out. Again, to emphasize the pieces that went into it, first, I figured out that unit, the distance and the unit vector involved by starting with just the difference between the two position vectors. I plugged those into Coulomb's law, and at that point, it really was just math that was left to do, simplifying things down until I got an answer in units of force that works out nicely and neatly that way. So that's, our, that's an example of calculating an electric force using Coulomb's law, and I hope that those steps are steps that can generalize to lots of other problems that you'll run into as you work on electricity and magnetism.